All right, first we'll cover the ten orders we will not obey. Obey, and we will not obey orders to disarm the American people. Second Amendment, right? So, when they try to disarm you, it's illegal and unlawful for them to do so. Same thing with conducting warrantless searches on the American people. That would be the Fourth Amendment. Your right to be secure in your person and your your papers and your property. So, and we cannot, we will not obey orders to detain American citizens as unlawful enemy combatants or subject them to military tribunal. The, the uh, Sixth Amendment, right to speedy, right to a criminal prosecution and a public trial. And we will not obey orders to impose martial law or a state of emergency on a state. The Constitution nowhere says that the government has the authority to declare martial law <coughs> or a state of emergency. Every time they do, they're breaking the law. Every time. We will not obey orders to invade and subjugate any state that asserts its sovereignty. Tenth Amendment. All rights not guaranteed, not, uh, all powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or the people. The people are the power in this government. And it's time we put the shackles back on them through the Constitution. Uh, we will not obey any order to blockade American cities, thus turning them into giant concentration camps. Once again, you're supposed to be free in your persons and, and possessions and properties. We will not order, we will not obey any order to force American citizens into any form of detention camps under any pretext, such as an emergency or martial law. We will not obey orders to assist or support the use of any foreign troops on U.S. soil against the American people to keep the peace or to maintain control. The Constitution has a call for the, the militia to uh, repel rebellions and insurrections. There is no constitutional authority for them to bring in outsiders or use our own military against us. They have no authority. That's the thing we need to ask them, where's your authority? <clears throat> we will not obey any orders to confiscate the property of the American people, including food and other essential supplies. Fourth Amendment again. We will not obey any orders which infringe on the right of the people to free speech, peacefully assemble and petition their government for a redress of grievances. First Amendment. All that said, how do they get away with what they're doing? Because the people are asleep. They've been drugged with television, education, which is nothing more than indoctrination. Everybody's been drugged and brainwashed. And if you don't believe me, finish the line. You deserve a break today. <laughs> Come on, say that. Was done. There you go. <laughs> don't get off the so <laughs> All right. I got some information here. You can agree to disagree with it. I find it very interesting. In 1871, February 21st, Congress passed an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, also known as the Act of 1871. With no constitutional authority to do so, Congress creates a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10-mile ten, ten square parcel of land. You can see the Acts of the 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapter 61 and 62. The Act passed when the country was weakened and financially depleted in the aftermath of the Civil War. It was a strategic move by foreign interests, international bankers, who were intent upon gaining a stranglehold on the coffers and neck of America. Congress cut a deal with the international bankers, specifically Rothschilds of London, to incur a debt to said bankers, because the bankers were not about to lend money to a floundering nation without serious stipulations. They devised a way to get their foot in the door of the United States. The Act of 1871 formed a corporation called the United States, all capital letters. The corporation, owned by foreign interests, moved in and shoved the original Constitution into a dustbin. 
With the Act of 1871, the organic constitution was defaced, in effect vandalized and sabotaged. When the title was capitalized and the word for was changed to of in the title. All capital letters of, not for. The Constitution of the United States of America, all capital letters, is the Constitution of the Incorporated United States of America. It operates in an economic capacity and has been used to fool the people into thinking it governs the Republic. It does not. Capitalization is not insignificant when one is referring to a legal document. This seemingly minor alteration has had a major impact on every subsequent generation of Americans. What Congress did by passing the Act of 1871 was create an entirely new document, a constitution for the government of the District of Columbia, an incorporated government. This Act of 1871 newly altered constitution was not intended to benefit the Republic. It benefits only the Corporation of the United States of America and operates entirely outside of the original organic constitution. Instead of having absolute and unalienable rights guaranteed under the organic constitution, we, the people, now have relative rights or privileges. One example is the sovereign's right to travel, which has now been transformed under corporate government policy into a privilege that requires citizens to be licensed, also passports. By passing the Act of 1871, Congress committed treason against the people who were sovereign under the grants and decrees of the Declaration of Independence and the organic constitution. The Act of 1871 became the foundation of all treason since committed by government officials. The United States isn't a country, it's a corporation. In preparation for stealing America, the puppets of Britain's banking cabal had already created a second government, a shadow government designed to manage what the common herd believed was a democracy, but what really was an incorporated United States. Together, this chimera, this two-headed monster, disallowed the common herd all right of sui juris, you and your sovereignty. It was uh, little more than a calculator front with fancy footwork. I did miss something. Congress, with no authority to do so, created a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10-mile square parcel of land. Why and how did they do so? It was, in fact, little more than a calculator front with fancy footwork by backroom players. It was also a strategic maneuver by British and European interests, international bankers, intent on gaining a stranglehold on the coffers of America. And because Congress knew our country was in dire financial straits, certain members of Congress cut a deal with the international bankers. In those days, the Rothschilds of London were dipping their fingers into everyone's pie. There you had the why. Why members of Congress permitted the international bankers to gain further control of America. Then by passing the Act of 1871, Congress formed a corporation known as the United States. This corporation owned by foreign interests shoved the organic version of the Constitution aside by changing the word for to of in the title. Let me explain the original Constitution drafted by the Founding Fathers read, the Constitution for the United States of America. <coughs> Note that neither the word United or States became the capital letters, but the Constitution of the United States of America is a corporate Constitution which is absolutely not the same document you <coughs> think it is. First of all, it ended all our rights of sovereignty, sweet juris. So you now have the how the international bankers got their hands on the United States of America. To fully understand how our rights of sovereignty were ended, you must know the full meaning of sovereign. Chief or highest, supreme power, superior in position to all others, independent of and unlimited by others, possessing or entitled to original and independent authority or jurisdiction. That's in Webster's Dictionary. In short, our government, which was created by and for us as sovereigns, free citizens deemed to have the highest authority in the land, was stolen from us, along with our rights. Keep in mind that according to the original Constitution, only we the people are sovereign. Government is not sovereign. The Declaration of Independence says government is subject to the consent of the governed. That's us, the sovereigns. When did you last feel like a sovereign? It doesn't take a rocket scientist or a constitutional historian to figure out that the U.S. government has not been subject to the consent of the government since long before you and I were born. Rather, the governed are subject to the whim and greed of the corporation, which has stretched its tentacles beyond the 10-mile square parcel of land known as the District of Columbia. 
In fact, it has invaded every state of the Republic. Mind you, the corporation has no jurisdiction beyond the District of Columbia. You just think it does. You see, you are presumed to know the law, which is very weird since we, the people, are taught nothing about the law in school. We memorize obscure facts and phrases here and there, like the preamble which says we, the people, establish this Constitution for the United States of America, but our teachers only gloss over the Bill of Rights. Our schools, controlled by the corporate government, don't delve into the Constitution at depth. After all, the corporation was established to indoctrinate and dumb down the masses, not to teach anything of value or importance. Certainly, no one mentioned that America was sold out to foreign interests and that we were beneficiaries of the debt incurred by Congress or that we were in debt to the international bankers. Yet for generations, Americans have had the bulk of their earnings confiscated to pay a massive debt that they did not incur. There's an endless stream of things the people aren't told. And now that you are being told, how do you feel about being made the recipient of a debt without your knowledge or consent? After passage of the Act of 1871, Congress set a series of subtle and overt deceptions into motion, deceptions in the form of decisions that were meant to sell us down the river. Over time, the Republic took it on the chin until it was knocked down and counted out by a technical knockout. With the surrender of the people's gold in 1933, the common herd was handed over to illegitimate law. I bet you weren't taught that in school. Our corporate form of governance is based on Roman civil law and admiralty or maritime law, which is also known as the divine right of kings and the law of the seas. Another fact of American history not taught in our schools. Actually, Roman civil law was fully established in the colonies before our nation began and then be became managed by private international law. In other words, the government, the government created for the District of Columbia via the Act of 1871 operates solely under private international law, not common law, which was the foundation of our constitutional republic. This fact has impacted all Americans in concrete ways. For instance, although private international law is technically only applicable within the District of Columbia and not in the other states of the Union, the arms of the Corporation of the United States are called departments. Justice Department, Treasury Department, etc. And those departments affect everyone, no matter where, in what state they live. Guess what? Each department belongs to the corporation, to the United States. Retur refer to any United States code and note the capitalization. This is evidence of a corporation, not a republic. For example, in Title 28, 3002, 15 ABC, it is un unequivocally stated that the United States is a corporation. Translation. The corporation is not a separate and distinct entity. It is not disconnected from the government. It is the government. Your government. This is extremely important. I refer to it as the corporate empire of the United States, which operates under Roman civil law outside the original Constitution. How do you like being ruled by a corporation? You say you'll ask your congressperson about this. Huh. Congress is fully aware of this deception. So it's time that you too become aware of the deception. What this great deception means is that the members of Congress do not work for us, for you and me. They work for the corporation for the United States. No wonder we can't get them to do anything on our behalf or meet our demands or answer our questions. Technically, legally, or any other way you want to look at the matter, the corporate government of the United States has no jurisdiction or authority in any state of the Union, the Republic beyond the District of Columbia. Let that sink in. Then ask yourself, could this deception have occurred without full knowledge and complicity of the Congress? Do you think it happened by accident? If you do, you're deceiving yourself. There are no accidents, no coincidence. Face the facts and confront the truth. Remember, you are presumed to know the law. They know you don't know the law, or for that matter, your history. Why? Because no concerted effort was ever made to teach or otherwise inform you. As a sovereign, you are entitled to full disclosure of all facts. As a slave, you are entitled to nothing other than what the corporation decides to give you. Remembering also that ignorance of the law is no excuse. It is your responsibility that the corporation counted on the fact that most people are too indifferent, unconcerned, distracted, or lazy to learn what they need to know to survive within the system. We have been conditioned to let the government do our thinking for us. Now is the time to turn that around if we intend to help save our republic and ourselves before it's too late. As an instrument of the international bankers, the United States owns you from birth to death. 
It also holds ownership of all your assets, your property, even your children. Think long and hard about all the bills, taxes, fines, and licenses you have paid for or purchased. Yes, they had you by the pockets. If you don't believe it, read the 14th Amendment and see how free you really are. Ignorance of the facts led to your silence. Silence is construed as consent. Consent to be beneficiaries of a debt you did not incur. As a sovereign people, we have been deceived for hundreds of years. We think we are free, but in truth, we are servants of the corporation. Congress committed treason against the people in 1871. Honest men could have corrected the fraud and treason, but apparently there weren't enough honest men to counteract the lust for money and power. We lost more freedom than we'll ever know thanks to corporate infiltration of our so-called government. You think that any soldier who died in any of our many wars would have fought if they had known the truth? <clears throat> you think one person would have laid down their life for a corporation? How long will we remain silent? How long will we perpetuate the myth that we are free? When will we stand together as one sovereign people? And when will we take back what has been stolen from us? If the people of America had known to what extent their trust was betrayed, how long would it have taken for a real revolution to occur? What we need now is a revolution in thought. We need to change our thinking, and we can change our world. Our children deserve their rightful legacy. The liberty our ancestors fought to preserve the legacy of a sovereign and fully free people. I'm going to read the 14th Amendment. <sighs> Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Subject to their jurisdiction. Ten mile square area called Washington, D.C. That's their jurisdiction. Congress has exclusive rule over anything they create. They did not create the Union of States. The Union of States created the Constitution and gave life to the government. Section 2 of that same amendment. Congress shall have, or I'm sorry, duly convicted, <clears throat> uh, shall exist within the United States, okay? or any place subject to their jurisdiction. I think I'm reading the wrong one. Pardon me. I'm reading 13. Anyway, let's go to 14. All persons born or naturalized in the United States. Were you born in the United States? Or naturalized in the United States? Now remember, the United States today is a corporation. Were you born in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia? Do you claim to be a U.S. citizen every time you fill out an application for something? Yes. Yeah. That's your first mistake. You citizens put yourself under their jurisdiction. Yeah. Thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Then it goes on to talk about representatives and uh, to be a senator or a representative. And then section four, it says the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for service in suppressing insurrections or rebellion shall not be questioned. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume to, or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States, or any claim for the loss of emancipation of any slave, but all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. It's all about the debt. The validity of the public debt shall not be questioned. Now why would they put that in there? so they can keep borrowing and burying this country with debt, never ending. They took away our money in 1933, stuck us under all this BS law, and 
it's a long, hard battle coming up on us. I have one more thing to read. This is attributed to, and if it's not his, it's appropriate. Uh, Edward Mandel House, who was uh, Wilson's right-hand man back in the Wilson administration from 1913 to 1921. It says, sent by the powers that rule the democracy, commercial government form, or from England, work with and control all presidents from Woodrow Wilson through Franklin Roosevelt in establishing all the American people are reaping by slavery. He had his private meeting with Woodrow Wilson and stated, very soon every American will be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging by such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as a chargeback for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer being able to work and earn a living. They will be our chattel, and we will hold the security interest over them forever by operation of the law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly delivering the bills of lading to us, will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent forever to remain economic slaves through taxation secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given a commercial value designed to make us a profit and they will be none the wiser. For not one man in a million could ever figure our plans. And if by accident one or two should figure it out, we have in our arsenal plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and privileges. This will inevitably, inevitably reap to us huge profits beyond our wildest expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud, which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur, and in this manner, every American will unknowingly be our servant, however begrudgingly. The people will become helpless and without any hope for their redemption. And we will employ the high office of the president of our dummy corporation to foment this plot against America. So, you know, it sounds bad, but I'm going to believe God. Okay? It's all about God. And it in this nation, our government, our leadership has turned their back on God. And you can tell by the garbage coming out of the White House what's going on. Um, from what I understand at the uh, State of the Union address tonight, the, uh, I can't remember that group, okay. there's these ladies that are petitioning to get removed from that part of Obamacare, requiring them to, to uh, provide abortion medicine are going to be there. They were invited by uh, the speaker, but there's members of the CAIR that were invited also, the Council on American Islamic Relations. So I imagine that ought to be fun to watch part of it. Let's see what happens. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have tonight. I'll keep digging. You know, the more I stay away from the Joe Biden likes to call it the legitimate media. <laughs> the more I find the truth easier to get to. Like I said, it's all about God. We need to all be turning to God for our answers. We need to be praying and waking up and telling people, talking. Exercise that right to free speech. That's what we need to be doing. And being prepared as we, you know, that's what this is all about, being prepared. <laughs>